Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Gaming No Caffeine. My name is Isaac, and we are back for episode 5 of Feed the Beast Infinity for Minecraft 1.10. And today, I want to start by tinkering around with a new mod that was added in the newest update to this mod pack, and that mod is Refined Relocation. It's a storage mod, uh, or more, I guess more of a sorting mod, that helps aid the storage that you have. Uh, because right now, our chests are a little bit of a mess. They're not too bad. I've got all of my, like, uh, mining gems and stuff over in this chest then over here is pretty much everything else all of our cobblestone dirt and then just random bits and pieces that don't really fit into this chest but a uh, refinery location makes sorting and organizing all those chests super easy without the need for any kind of pipes or anything like that uh, but before we jump into this, I want to show you a couple of things that I have done since the end of last episode. Uh, starting with, of course, a little bit more mining. We made our new hammer last episode, so I've done a little bit more mining, got a bunch more ingots, uh, specifically a bunch more osmium, which we were really low on before, and it's going to come in really useful later on in today's episode, because I do want to jump in and get started with a little bit of mechanism. Uh, but the reason why we didn't have much osmium before is that osmium tends to spawn around Y level 30-ish, and I was doing a lot of mining really high up around about Y level 50, trying to get all of the copper and the tin, and then doing a bunch of mining down at Y level 12-ish, trying to get all of the diamonds and the redstone and the gold, and so we didn't really have all that much osmium, but uh, with the new hammer, I just went down to Y level 30, did a bunch of strip mining uh, around that area, tried to find as many caves uh, and ravines as we could, got as much osmium, and of course processed it all through the little macerator system that we have over here. We of course have more of everything else, some more lapis, redstone, coal, diamonds, all the good stuff, and I've also done a little bit of terraforming outside as you can see uh, also don't worry about that uh, like quick little flicker between color and black and white i'm not quite sure what causes that it might be like a forge bug but whenever i log onto the world and uh, move around for a little bit the world does kind of flicker black and white and then back into color again uh, it shouldn't happen again throughout the course of the video but uh, essentially did a little bit of terraforming flattened out the land a little bit and uh, moved all of my apple trees and rubber trees into these new little like fenced areas here to make it a little bit easier to get all this stuff so instead of having to scour around trying to find where all of my rubber wood was or more specifically for the apples and uh, my apple trees as you can see were kind of uh, spread out pretty far but uh, i just put down four apple trees in here and all of my rubber wood so now if i ever need some sticky resin i could just easily come to this pen and tap all nine of these trees and then for apples i can just wander in and grab all of the ripe apples whenever i like and that leads me finally to the last thing that i've done since the end of last episode which comes from a suggestion in the comment section and that was to make a super crafting frame for apple juice so that as soon as i've been outside and done all my apple farming i could just come in here and craft as many any apple juices as I possibly can. I can eat those, fill up my hunger, and we're good to go. So, a refined relocation. Basically, it gives you the ability to sort chests if that makes sense so uh, we're probably gonna go with the sorting iron chest you can make a sorting upgrade and we could upgrade our uh, chests as they are right now but once you've upgraded a chest with a sorting upgrade you then can't upgrade it with the iron chests upgrades which allow you to turn normal chests into iron chests and iron chests into gold chests etc etc i'm not quite sure if that's a bug or if that's by design but i tried in a single player world uh, creative world to put down a normal chest make it a sorting chest with the sorting upgrade and then try to upgrade upgrade it to an iron sorting upgrade uh, with the iron upgrade which is this one down here the wood to iron chest upgrade essentially what this does is if you make this and then right click on any existing chest it will upgrade it to an iron chest but it doesn't work once you've made a sorting chest so essentially we are going to make ourselves a uh, an iron sorting chest right off the bat and to make these we need an iron chest two redstone one hopper and then one book and quill now for this we're going to need some black dye a book and a feather now as of right now now we don't have any feathers or any ink, so we are going to have to go away for a second and try and get some of those. I have seen some chickens nearby, and as you can see on the minimap, there are actually quite a lot of cows around. And so getting enough leather for the books should be fairly easy. I want to make probably around four of these. We've got four chests right now. I want to get rid of all those, replace them with four iron sorting chests, and then probably one non-iron sorting chest, just like a normal sorting chest. So I think... We're going to have to make five booking quills, which means we need five feathers, five ink sacks, and five books. So, what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to go away real quick. I'm going to sleep first. I'm going to see if we can find five chickens so we can get those five feathers. I'm going to see if I can find some squid so I can try and get those five ink sacks. And then I'll probably end up making the presser from Pam's Harvest Craft, which allows you to press wood into paper. You can turn wooden logs into paper by just putting it through there. doesn't require any power. It's a really useful thing to have when we don't have any sugar cane, at least not that I've seen. There isn't really any nearby. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go away, guys. I'm going to sleep. I'm going to get all the stuff that we need to make those sorting chests. And I'll be back in a second. 
Okay, so not too long later, I don't have anywhere near the number of feathers, leather, books, or ink sacks that we need, but uh, I've killed a couple of cows, and we've only gotten one leather, and so I decided to take a look at, uh, at the recipe for leather to see if we could make it by any other means, and it turns out that if we use the Tinker's Construct drying racks, we can actually dry some steak into leather. So, uh, essentially, the way that this works, if memory serves me correctly, uh, we can make drying racks like so, if we get some uh, wooden slabs and then craft those again with the same recipe, that's going to get us four drying racks, which I guess for now we can probably put like here, 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 and here. And then if I cook up some of this raw beef into some steak uh, in one of our furnaces, I can then put that raw beef onto the drying rack. And after about eight minutes, that raw beef will turn into, into leather that we can then use for the books. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick all of these steaks up here once it's finished cooking, leave those for eight and a half minutes. Uh, hopefully they're done around about the time that I get back from getting all the ink sacks and all the feathers that I need. And I'll be back in a second. All right, so again, a little while later, I've gone out, I've got all of the ink sacks that we need, I've got more than enough feathers, and when I came back, more, all of my drying racks have kind of reset their progress. I left, and these two drying racks here were on 25%. Now I've come back, and they've worked their way up to 18%, and so I think what's happened is, if you let the chunk that the drying racks are in unload, then the progress resets. Because I went pretty far out in that direction to get some of the new chickens that I needed. And when I've come back, they have it's reset. So I think when you put these down, just top tip if you're going to do this, uh, make sure you don't leave the chunk, otherwise they do reset. Thankfully, uh, I did find a couple of sheep and I took my shears with me. And so what we can do, instead of using leather, we can put our wool into the macerator, turning each wool into two string. And if we look at the recipe over here for a book, we can use three paper, two black blank patterns from Tinker's Construct and one string to make a book instead of the traditional three paper and one leather. So we don't actually need these to be finished, but uh, if they are finished by the time that I've finished crafting everything else, uh, we can use them or we can use the recipe with the string. Either way, it should work fine. But before we can make any of that, we first of all need to get ourselves the presser from Pam's Harvest Craft so that we can go ahead and turn some of our oak wood into that paper that we need. So let's grab quite a bit of iron and let's come back over here. If I type in presser, uh, this thing is fairly easy to make it is two pistons we're missing a little bit of wood there six should be the perfect amount that we need to make those two pistons and then once we've got those it's just a matter of shift clicking that in that gets us the presser and now uh, if we put this down I guess, like, right about here we'll do for now. Can we put this on top? We can, beautiful. Uh, and essentially, if you put wood in there, it's going to go ahead and press that wood into paper. It doesn't require any kind of power whatsoever, uh, so it's a pretty useful machine to have, uh, and that's going to get us all the paper that we need. Our macerator is now done, so we can go ahead and grab that 10 string, which is not going to be any use whatsoever in the furnace. Uh, and now, we're pretty much good to go. If we go back to refined relocation here, uh, so we want to make the iron sorting chest. That does mean that we're going to need five hoppers and five iron chests, which is quite a bit of iron. Uh, so I'll pull out 59 there, almost a stack. We'll grab some oak wood. We can craft all of that into oak planks, which is more than enough to get us the five chests that we want. Uh, although we're actually gonna need a bunch more because we need one chest for the hopper and then an extra chest for the iron chest on top of that hopper. So let's go ahead and do something like that. That's gonna get us 10 chests. We can now turn five of those chests into hoppers like so. One, two, three, four, five. Once we've got those, I think all we are missing now is the book and quill yet yeah, because we've got all the redstone that we need uh, i should probably grab a little bit more out of this chest so now we're just waiting for this stuff that got a six which is enough for two books i should probably stick a little bit more in there and we should also look into getting a tree farm sometime soon as well because we are running pretty low on wood and we do need quite a couple of things uh, how are these doing 56 percent they're a little bit slow so let me go ahead and wait here guys whilst we get enough paper to make a third one there we go so now we got this i can show you the basics of how these work and i can make the rest of them uh, off camera so let's go ahead and make ourselves three books here once we've grabbed some of these blank patterns from over here we shouldn't now have everything that it takes to make some of these books once we've got three of those we can turn those instantly into three books and quills and then once we've got those we should be able to first of all craft up three iron chests and then once that's done we can craft all of those into iron sorting chests so uh, the way that these work is they essentially allow you to auto sort your items into certain chests so uh let me grab do we have any sticks in here we do let me grab a couple of these chest transporters that we made a couple of episodes back so I can move the two chests that I have here to another location. Also, I'm going to take these down for now. I am going to put these back on to the sorting chest once we're done just to make it a little easier to access all the stuff inside if we so wish. 
spawn. I'm not quite sure what's gonna happen if we try to take these off. Uh, if we try to move the chest whilst they're still on. So let me move this and this over to there. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna put this, this, and I guess I can get rid of that, but I don't want to do it with my hammer because I'm afraid that's going to break a bunch of stuff. So we'll do that as well. And I kind of want to make a sorting chest, like a, an initial sorting chest. Can I press birchwood into paper as well? Does that work? I'm going to assume that it does. It does. Cool. Okay. So essentially, the way that it works is if you go into any of these chests, in the top right hand corner, there is a little like sorting icon. And basically what the sorting icon allows you to do is filter certain items or set certain filters for that specific chest. So for example, uh, if I click on this first one here, uh, I can put item match filter. And essentially, what that's going to say to the uh, to the chest surrounded is if there is an item in this chest, for example, uh, if I put some redstone into this chest here, and then I go into this filter and I select the item match filter. That means that any redstone in any of the chests that are adjacent to this chest will automatically move to this chest. So, for example, if I dump some redstone in here, all of that redstone is going to end up in this chest. Because I specified that any items that are already in this chest should go straight to this chest. Uh, and now if I do the same with iron, string, and my stone axe, none of those go there because none of them are in this chest already. Um, that's one basic one we can do. Uh, but we can get a little bit more specific because uh, what if we run out of redstone? If we run out of redstone and then we put redstone into a chest, it's just going to stay in that chest. What you can actually do is if you go back in here, there are a bunch of extra filters you can add, and you can add multiple filters. So we could say, first of all, make sure that if any item is in this chest, bring all of the rest of them here as well. We might as well. And then we can add a secondary filter that says, for example, item name. I can type in here, uh, let's say iron ingot. And as you can see, as soon as I type that in, the iron ingot in my inventory is glowed green. I can press enter. Uh, I could type in apple as well. Uh, and as soon as I do that, the apple in my inventory glows green. And now, if I put any iron or any apples into any of the chests, they're going to automatically get moved over into this chest. Pretty cool stuff, right? So, my plan here is, if we come over and grab some of this paper, what I want to do is, let me quickly whip up, I'm going to make a normal chest, a normal sorting chest. Uh, we need a book. Let's get grab that. Let's turn that book into a book and quill and let's turn that book and quill into a normal sorting chest and essentially we're going to have one chest on the end here that is not going to be used for storing items this chest here is going to be used solely for dumping items into so i'm just going to dump all of my items into there and then they're going to get automatically sorted into any of the other items around here oh it doesn't like the uh the chest texture there i'm not quite sure why but uh this is going to be my dumping chest we're going to put everything into here and then we're going to add filters to all of the rest of the chests so that all of the items end up in the correct place so what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to set up these chests how I want them. We'll have one for, like, redstone, coal, diamonds, lapis, appetite, all the stuff that we get from mining all the gems. We'll have another one dedicated to the stuff that's on, like, this little thing here, the cobblestone, the wood, uh, the sand, the gravel. We'll have probably... We probably won't have one for ingots just yet because that ingots are over here. We probably don't want to do anything with that just yet. Uh, but I'm going to organize all these. We're going to put filters on them, and I'll be back in a second. And a little while later, we have four chests that look like this. So we got our first one over here, which is the gems one. It's got the redstone, the coal, the diamonds, the, the emeralds, all that kind of good stuff. This one is a mod-specific one. Uh, in here, I used the mod filter, which you could just select one mod from any mod that it's installed. And uh, for this one, I just used Industrial Craft 2. So anything that is from the Industrial Craft 2 mod will make its way into this chest here. This one is kind of our generics block chest. And then on the end, I added another special filter, which is, first of all, I used the item match filter on all of these but then i also put a preset filter and the preset filter has a bunch of presets that you can choose from to determine what goes into that chest for example all blocks all ores all ingots i used all unstackable and so all tools buckets the chisel anything that won't normally stack will end up in this end chest over here uh, i might want to put maybe like all blocks onto the very end of here. Uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, that it kind of goes through the list in terms of priority. So for example, uh, one thing that I did in this chest over here, uh, if I go to the name filter, I put uh, rubber wood on this list, but because it's the second one in the sorting order for this chest, but Industrial Craft 2 is the first one in the sorting order for this chest, it kind of overrides 
this chest and go straight to the industrial craft 2 chest. So if I put rubber wood in here or even in here, even though it's on a filter for this chest, because it's the first filter on this chest and the second filter on this one, it prioritizes the industrial craft 2 chest. I believe we could also tweak the priority with this here. If I set this to 500, I think that would then change the priority. Yeah, then the, the rubber wood goes to there instead of going to the other chest, which is pretty cool. And this system doesn't really cover... Wow, I didn't know there was a highest. This system doesn't really cover all of my items. If I come over to this chest, over here these are all the items that as of right now don't fit into any of the chests if i put these into my dump chest they don't go anywhere and so what i plan to do between episodes is probably expand out maybe even fill this wall with these iron chests and get a bunch more filters going i'll probably have a few more dedicated mod chests i might also have just like a minecraft chest uh, because when you go into the mod filter you can specify minecraft and i might do that uh, just for things like sticks glass wood all that kind of stuff arrows you know wool a lot of this stuff here would fit nicely into a generic minecraft chest to let me know that it's from the vanilla game uh, but yeah i'm gonna work on that between episodes and get a nice refined relocation sorting system up and running but now what i want to work on is a little bit of mechanism so uh, I kind of want to use Mechanism as a middle mod between Industrial Craft 2 and almost every other mod in the mod pack. Because as of right now, we're generating EU for all of our Industrial Craft 2 machines, but Industrial Craft 2 is the only mod that natively uses EU as a power unit. The rest of the mods in the pack, or most of the other mods in the mod pack, use Redstone Flux. Now, the cool thing is the mechanism allows you to convert between EU and Redstone Flux. I had a couple of people in the comment section tell me that the universal cables from Mechanism could work to transfer EU to Redstone Flux. And I looked at them. If you press shift while looking at them, it does say that they are capable of transferring RF, EU, and jewels. But they don't work with the EU generators. So, for example, if I was to put down one of those basic universal cables next to my low voltage solar array, it is incapable of pulling the power out of the low voltage solar array. I'm not quite sure why, and I don't know if that's a bug with the latest version of mechanism, but I tried having a low voltage solar array, a mechanism cable, and then say a bat box in a single player world, and that didn't work. But what does work is you could take the, uh, the power from the low voltage solar array, transfer it via normal industrial craft cable, to a energy cube from mechanism one of these things and then the energy cube will store that eu and then if you use one of the universal cables to pull out from there into any other machine like for example any of the machines that use redstone flux that will transfer the eu generated from the low voltage solar array into redstone flux so you can do it but you have to go through an energy cube at least in the current version that i'm playing on right now that might get fixed in the future the cables might start working uh, boom what we're going to do, we're going to start by making one of these energy cubes and some of these universal cables, just so I can show you what I'm on about here. So, in order to make any of this stuff, we are going to need to make ourselves some of these enriched alloys. They're a basis of mechanism. I press U. There are 18 pages of crafting recipes with all the stuff that you can make with these enriched alloys within mechanism. They're used in a ton of recipes, and these are made in the metallurgic infuser with one iron and one redstone. So, the metallurgic infuser is a fairly easy machine to make and it's kind of a vital machine within mechanism it's four iron ingots two redstone two furnaces and one osmium so let's go ahead and grab some redstone let's grab some iron we should have some osmium we do we'll grab that as well and i was going to say we should have some furnaces which we do as well we can take all of those combine them together and that will get us a metallurgic infuser nice now another cool thing is that the mechanism machines will natively work with eu power when connected to industrial craft 2 cable so for example if i do this this machine will begin receiving power from our solar panel which is currently not active because it cannot see the sun that should activate it and that should start to receive some power in the form of eu it does uh, down here at the bottom you can change the unit of power that any item or block in mechanism uses by clicking on the bottom here so you can see right now uh, it's going to use five eu per tick to do whatever it wants to do uh, where it says needed that's how much is needed to fill the internal buffer right now it's holding 2000 eu in its internal buffer uh, but now we can use this using the power from industrial craft 2 pretty cool stuff obviously not the best placement of the metallurgic infuser i will move this uh, inside at some point but for now we're gonna leave it here we're gonna put some redstone in on the left hand side that's gonna get us 10 redstone in this little internal buffer here and then if we put in one iron that's gonna go ahead and craft up into an enriched alloy 
while that's doing that, let me show you the recipe for these universal cables. These require two steel and one redstone. The steel can be made, if we find the mechanism steel, by putting, by smelting some steel dust, which is made, again, in the metallurgy infuser, with enriched iron and coal, enriched iron being normal iron, and then either coal or charcoal in the metallurgy infuser again. So, let's go ahead and see if we can make two of those real quick. If we grab ourselves two iron and then four coal, that should be enough for us to make the two steel required to make at least one of the or one set of those universal cables i think you make eight in a set uh, you do so we can get eight of those fairly easily all we have to do is put the coal in on the left the iron in in the middle let that run through and once it's done put the enriched iron back in again to use the final 20 carbon and now that that's done, we can take this out. I'm going to break the enrichment... Uh, it's an enrichment chamber at the top there for some reason in Willa. I'm going to break the metallurgic infuser uh, because I want to kind of test with it uh, using the universal cable in a second. Uh, but now, let's grab some redstone. Let's craft all that together. Once we have smelted up uh, the steel dust, while that is smelting, let's go ahead and grab some sleep. And once that steel is done, we can take that. We can craft it with our redstone. And that is going to get us eight basic universal cable, uh, which should be able to transfer up to 320 EU per tick. Quite a large amount. But, like I mentioned before, if I come over here and do something like this, I'm going to look like a fool uh, if this doesn't happen now. But you can see this doesn't glow up, and usually it does glow up when power is being transferred through it. And just to kind of show this off here, we do need some more of these enriched alloys in order to make the energy cube, because we need two of these energy tablets, each of which requires two of these enriched alloys. So, let me go ahead and grab three redstone, and that should get us enough to make three more of the enriched alloys. But if I put both of these into here, the power goes down, but it doesn't go back up. It's not going to receive any kind of power even once this has finished. The the, the, the cable, uh, for some reason, is unable to pull the power from the low voltage solar array. Whereas with the energy cube, it, it is. Now, it's not able to pull from the energy cube, but the energy cube has the option of inputs and outputs. You can set one side specifically to output power, which I think might be where the issue lies. You can see right now it's out of power and it's not receiving any. Whereas if I get rid of this... And then head on through to my industrial craft two chest and grab one of the uh, the tin or copper cables that we have lying around in there. It should work just fine. Let's see. We'll take you. Run this back around. Boom. And it works just fine. So uh, not quite sure what that is. They they seem unable to actively pull from this, but it doesn't really matter. We can use the energy cubes. Uh, so. Now we've got that, I was going to go away and wait for those to finish, but now we've got those three. Uh, let's come back inside and let's see about making those energy tablets. So each energy tablet requires three gold and four redstone. So let's go ahead and grab six gold like so. And we'll also go ahead and grab eight redstone out of here like that. We should be able to craft all those together fairly easily like so. If Isaac learns how to craft two redstone and then enriched alloys either side like so. That gets us the energy tablets. And now all we need is four redstone, two iron, and then one steel casing which is four steel, four glass, and one osmium. So uh, I'm going to go away real quick. I'm going to make four more steel ingots, and I'll be back in a second to finish up this energy cube. And once we got the four steel, we can take that out. We can grab the glass, which I put into here, and we can use all of that stuff to make ourselves the steel casing. And then once we got that, we now have everything that we need, apart from uh, a little bit of redstone and a little bit of iron, to make ourselves our first mechanism energy cube, which is basically just a storage device, just like the... Um, what did I drop those? I did. Just like the bat box, but with the energy cube, it could transfer or it could hold any kind of energy really so uh, for example let's go ahead and again break the enrichment chamber i did make some more steel dust here and i should point out uh, before i move on that i am being a little bit wasteful with the metallurgic infuser uh, because when i put coal or redstone into the slot on the left we only get 10 kind of internal points on this bar here whereas if i show you the recipe here real quick again for the enriched alloy you'll see that you can use compressed redstone which is one piece of redstone put through an enrichment chamber and if you put compressed redstone into the metallurgic infuser you get 100 points in the left hand column there so uh, basically if you put redstone through an enrichment chamber first you'll be able to get 10 enriched alloys or in the case of coal you'll be able to get 10 steel ingots out of every single piece of coal or redstone as opposed to having to use 10 coal or 10 redstone uh, so we will be making an enrichment chamber at some point in the future but for now let's go ahead and get rid of this and if i was to go ahead and put down my energy cube like this you'll see that it is beginning to start you and if i go over to configuration here you can configure uh, where the power comes in and out and for example example if i was to now do something a little bit like this if we throw this down right about there right now it's got full power so let's say we throw in some redstone and some iron in order to go ahead and run the power down a little bit 
Right now, it's staying at full power because you can see here the basic universal cable is lit up. It's receiving power out of here. And you can go ahead and turn this off. I can turn this side to nothing. It won't connect. I can turn it to input and then it won't transfer power to the metallurgic infuser, but it will pull my power in this direction. But we're going to set it to output. And now any power that goes into here can be used as either EU, RF, or just basic Minecraft jewels. Uh, I'm not quite sure if we have any mods installed that do use normal Minecraft jewels. Uh, but for now, I'm going to leave it as EU. Uh, this is going to make it really easy to transfer power between the different mods because I kind of want to make quite a few of the power generation sources from Industrial Craft 2 and the Industrial Craft 2 add-on mods, but up until now, there wasn't really too easy of a way to transfer that power into RF to then use it with mods like NYO that only use Redstone Flux. And actually thinking about it, Forestry might use normal jewels, but I think it accepts Redstone Flux now. I'm not actually quite sure. But essentially, that's how we can convert our power from EU to Mechanism. And now, for the final part of today's episode, I want to work on generating some more power using another generator from Industrial Craft 2. At this time, we're going to move away from solo a little bit, and we're going to go into some wind power using the wind turbine from Industrial Craft 2. So to make this, we need two iron shafts and one basic machine casing. The basic machine casing we've made a couple of times before now. It's just eight iron plates. And the iron Iron shafts are made in a metal former with one block of iron. So the metal former is a pretty interesting machine from Industrial Craft 2. Essentially, what it does is it does the job of the uh, the forge hammer and the wire cutters, as well as some extra stuff, without the need for the forge hammer or the wire cutters. So once we made this, theoretically, we won't have to keep making forge hammers or making wire cutters in order to make plates or wires. We can instead just put all of our stuff through the metal former and it should be good to go. So for this, we need another electronic circuit. We need two toolboxes, which is the normal chest, and then five bronze item casing, uh, which is just a forge hammer and a bronze plate, which is just a bronze ingot, as well as three of these coils, which is some copper cable and some iron. And just so I don't bore you with all of the grindy crafting that Industrial Craft 2 has, I'm going to go away real quick. I'm going to do all of the forge hammering and cuttering to get all of the items required for the metal former, and I'll be back in a second. And not too long later, we now have ourselves a metal former. Nice. So I have gone ahead and moved the presser that we made earlier in today's episode. I moved it over to this back corner over here uh, because we probably won't end up using it all too much, at least not for the next couple of episodes. And I've basically done that just so we can make room for the metal former. It's going to go right about there. And like I said, essentially, this works as the cutter, the hammer, and extra all bounded to one. So you can see there are a few modes. It was the rolling mode, the cutting mode, and the extruding mode. The rolling mode, as you can tell by the image there, turns, for example, iron ingot into iron plates like so uh, if we go over the cutting mode and the extruding mode are a little bit confusing because you'd assume that the cutting mode would turn for example copper plates into copper cable but that's not what it does for example if i was to put some copper into here and uh, that's going to turn our copper ingots into a uh, copper cable which kind of makes sense because it shows the picture of the copper cable there but up until now, we've been using the cutters to make those copper cables, so it's a little bit confusing. Thankfully, you do get extra copper out of it, so usually when we do, for example, a copper plate with the normal cutters, we only get two copper cable uh, from each ingot, whereas now with the metal former, we can get three, which is pretty cool. Uh, but more importantly, uh, if we turn it over, I'm pretty sure to rolling mode, what we can do is we can put a block of iron through there and get those iron shafts that we need in order to make the wind turbines. These ones over here, uh, the two iron shafts are, oh no, they're extruding mode, I didn't know that, but if we put those in on the left and we put them through extruding mode they should both get us the two iron shafts we've already got the basic machine casing i made an extra one a second ago and that gets us everything that we need to make the wind turbine now in order for the wind turbine to run we also need some kind of rotor we need to pick one of the four rotors added by industrial craft and each of them has a minimum amount of wind that is required in order for them to run now i'm not quite sure how you determine how much wind there is, but in my testing, I can only ever get the first two to work when it wasn't raining. When it rains, the wind levels go up, and it, they spin faster, uh, and you do get more power, but when it's not raining, I can only ever get the wooden uh, kinetic gearbox rotor and the iron kinetic gearbox rotor to work. So I'm probably going to make the iron one, uh, because it does generate more power. It is very expensive in terms of the amount of iron that it requires. We, of course, need another block for the shaft, and we also need four of these iron rotor blades, each of which requires a total of nine iron ingots, six of which are in the form of iron plates. Uh, so let's go ahead and I guess grab like 24 iron real quick and throw that uh, into the metal former so that while we're working on other stuff, that can be busy turning those into uh, into plates for us. Of course, sometimes it is going to be faster for us to just use the forge hammer. And although it does require six iron to make the forge hammer, uh, sometimes it's a little bit nicer than having to wait for the metal former to craft. Again, eventually in the future, we can make one on those overclocker upgrades to speed that thing up. But for now, we're only generating 
8 EU per tick during the day, so we don't really have the power necessary uh, to speed up those machines. And we're also going to need what is known as a kinetic generator, this guy over here. And what that's going to do is that's going to transfer the kinetic energy from the wind turbine into EU power that we can then use in not just now our industrial craft machines, but also all of our other machines as well. And for this, we need six iron item casing, which is iron plates through the metal former or through the hammer. We need to get another shaft. We've used so many blocks of iron today. It's crazy. An electric motor, which is two tin item casing, two coils, and one iron. And then finally, another generator, uh, which we actually have over here, but I'm probably not going to pick this one up just for fear of it breaking when I do. Uh, so... What I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to go away. I'm going to craft all the stuff that we need for the iron rotor here. I'm going to craft all the stuff that we need for the kinetic generator. And I'll be back again in a second. And finally, a little while later, we should now have everything that it takes to make, first of all, the kinetic gearbox rotor iron. I've also got all the stuff to make the wooden version as well, just in case the iron one doesn't spin. I think it should, but just in case it doesn't, we'll make the wooden one as well. And we also have what it takes to make the wind turbine, of course. And then finally, we need to make ourselves the kinetic generator, which uh, we almost have everything to make. We just need the final few copper cables out of there, a couple more iron ingots out of here, and we should be pretty much good to go. Let's see. I need to make two of these. One, two. Once those are done, I should be able to make the electric motor just fine, and then everything else is good to go. Nice. So, essentially, uh, from what I understand, the higher up you go with these, the more wind there is in there for the more power they generate, but uh, when I tested it in a single-player world, going all the way up to, like, 200, 256 didn't really generate that much more than going to, like, 100, 150-ish, and so what I've done, as you can see, is I've made a bunch more steel, uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bunch more of these basic universal cables. We've made just over 100. I want to go up to the Y level 150 is where I want to put this thing. I have also charged up the jetpack. The rubber boots are both broken between episodes because I've done so much falling. Uh, this is not going to look great uh, to start with here. Actually, it's probably not going to look great for a while. It's going to be a big, long cable that goes up to Y level 150. Um, in the future, we can use um, we can use blocks of machines that will allow us to wirelessly transport this power back down to our base. But for now, we're going to have to have a big pipe that goes all the way up to Y level 150 and the reason why I'm using these mechanism cables and not the industrial craft cables is because the industrial craft cables have a loss associated with them. For example uh, if I type in a cable over here uh, you'll see that tin cables, these ones that we've been using throughout most of our base, have a loss of 0.2 which means every 5 insulated tin cables you put down, you lose one EU. So down at our base, we're probably losing close to two EU, just transferring the power from the back box through to the charge pad. And so, uh, especially when we're doing a really long distance like this, over 100 blocks, uh, if we were to use, for example, the tin insulated tin cables, or, or something bigger, like maybe the insulated HV cables, which you lose 0.8 EU per block, they lose 80% of their energy per block. Uh, if we were to use those from industrial craft, we would lose so much of our power. And so what we're going to do in Instead, is we're going to run up these mechanism cables, which are lossless, and then if we need to convert to Industrial Craft 2 once we get down, we can use the Industrial Craft 2 cables for a short distance from the Energy Cube to that Industrial Craft 2 cable. Uh, let me quickly finish up getting this to Y level 150. And now that we're there, what we can do is we can put down... First of all, let me grab some wood here, because I'm going to put this here. I'm going to put this wood here as kind of like a placeholder, right about there, if I can. And then we're going to put the wind generator on the front here. Let me go into hover mode so I can kind of work with this. We're going to put the wind turbine right about here. Also, did I mention we have like a really nice area around here? I really like the spawn that we've got. But essentially, you put your rotor in the middle here. These things do break down. They do run down over time. And right now, this is outputting 249 KU, which is kinetic units. If I was to put the wooden one in, it would generate... 124, so less than half as much as the iron one there, which is to be expected, the iron one is much more expensive. Uh, so let's go ahead and break this wood. Now what we need to do is put down the kinetic generator. I'm going to try and go back into hover mode. Uh, we need to put down the kinetic generator right about there, but we need to rotate it so that this section points at the wind turbine, because right now it's not producing any power. So let me quickly drop all the way back down into our base here. Uh, there we go. Let's grab the IC2 wrench, and all we have to do is shift right click on the back of the kinetic generator. That should switch it around, and it should start to generate a fair amount 
of EU per tick, especially considering how much the solar panel is generating. So if we shift, right click onto here, this is now producing 62.3 EU per tick. I think that's a combination of the fact that it's fairly high, the biome that we're in, which is forest, but we're kind of around this hilly area. Uh, I don't know if that makes a difference. When I tested this in a single player world, I got 26.8 EU per tick at 150 on the Y level. So this is really nice. Uh, I don't know if it's going to keep up like this. I don't know if it's like unusually windy right now, but uh, I do plan on making a few more of these, maybe two or three, uh, maybe between episodes, maybe just like between future episodes, uh, because for now, 62 EU per tick should be more than fine. Uh, all we need to do now is head on back down to the floor here, and I'm going to move this energy cube from here over to, I thought I'd lost that then. I'm going to move it from there over and around to the base of this big long cable that we've got. Uh, between episodes, I will also run this round to all of my other machines. But now we've got this, we can start using that power uh, to power machines that require RF. And we can use it to speed up some of the machines that we have downstairs, like the macerator and the metal former and a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, I should point out there is a fairly, uh, an easier way of doing probably what we just did there. Uh, mechanism generators, the mod mechanism generators, adds its own wind generator, which is far easier to make. It's three osmium, one enriched alloy, which we've already made, two of those energy tablets, and one basic control circuit. And I'm fairly certain that this would produce more EU, probably at a lower Y level, but... I'm probably not going to make uh, that many of the mechanism generators, that being the solar panel and wind generators, from mechanism, at least in the early game, because uh, they are a little bit overpowered, especially when compared to some of the other stuff. And I kind of like um, a lot of the stuff from Industrial Craft 2. It's kind of a, all of the stuff's kind of multi-part, uh, like the nuclear reactor that we can make further on down the line. There are a lot of moving parts within generating that power. And I kind of like that. I kind of like machines that we can set up and then try and automate and stuff like that. But, but yeah, we've got ourselves our new turbine. It is generating 65 EU per tick. That is fantastic. And with that, guys, I'm going to end this episode of Feed the Beast Infinity for Minecraft 1.10. There, as always, if you did enjoy the video, be sure to like. It really does help out a lot. Leave a comment down below, and I will see you guys next time.